My hair's starting to look like Wurzel Gummidge. Hello. Ignoring camera phones, because we've all got one of those, what do you think is the top-selling type of conventional camera at the moment? Is it the action camera like GoPros, little things like that? Or the compact mirrorless cameras? They're really popular. Is anybody still buying DSLRs? Or conventional camcorders? Or even the big boy cinema cameras that we all love but probably a bit too expensive? Well, if I was to tell you that it's none of those, would you be surprised? I've got the answer right here. Can you guess what it is? Ta-da! PTZ cameras. Was that your guess? Now, a good friend of mine, who's an industry insider and paid to know about this sort of stuff, told me that PTZ cameras were outselling conventional cameras five to one. And that's before all of this lockdown started. Now, I've known about PTZ cameras for many years, but I'm rather embarrassed to tell you that I didn't actually know what PTZ stood for for quite a long time. Pan, tilt, zoom. How come I couldn't work that out? And this is the entry-level PTZ camera from Panasonic, commonly known as the UE4. It's an unusual-looking camera that looks as though it's meant to sit on a wide base, but it also comes with brackets so you can fix it to the ceiling and has a tripod thread in the bottom so you can put it almost anywhere. It lets everybody know it's 4K on the front with just a power light and a tally light. The clear plastic is for the optional remote. There's just three sockets on the back, an Ethernet port for controlling the camera, and if you've got power over Ethernet, it'll power it as well. There's an HDMI output and USB-C. The USB-C will also power the camera and if you plug it into a computer, it works just like a webcam. But what we really want to know is, what do the pictures look like? So let's just put the PTZ in front of the... Um... So all you do is open up your favourite browser and put in the address 192.168.0.10. And there you go. And with the Ethernet plugged in, you can now control everything about the camera. Zoom out. Zoom in, left, right, move it around and you can set preset positions and then cut straight to them, which is really useful. So if we want to go out to the wide, it's that wide and you can do that live. From the setup menu, there's all your basic controls not just of the camera, but also of the network. You can set your codecs, your image size, frame rate, etc. And then you can finally adjust everything about the image, right down to white balances and detail levels. Very comprehensive. On the network page, this is obviously where you set up the ethernet, but also where you set up your RTMP built-in server. So you can go live to anywhere, just like that. They make it really easy to go live. But if I have a complaint about this particular PTZ camera, it's probably that the standard lens is a little bit too wide for what I want to do. It's great if you're covering a large conference hall or everybody's sitting around a big board table. But when you punch in for a close-up like that, you're effectively cropping in on the 4K sensor, which loses a lot of quality. For what I want to do, I'd probably be looking at a PTZ camera that has an optical zoom, so I'm not losing that quality, when I go in for a close-up. I do understand when you're serving a web user interface internally from the camera, you need to make it as small, efficient and compatible as you possibly can. It needs to work on all the different browsers. But I can't help feeling the layout of this is a little bit clunky. It's not that easy to use and the buttons are not falling naturally where I'd expect them to be. You've got 99 preset positions and you can cut between any of them live on air. So what you've got with this entry level model is basically a 4K sensor and you're panning, tilting and zooming within that sensor to give you a full HD output. And I think the quality of that output is really good. So this one camera can mimic the effect of several cameras. But I can't help thinking, oh, what's the point? When I started to look at this camera, I'm really not sure I got it. 
It's tempting to think of it as a glorified webcam. And yes, you can plug it into USB and treat it like a webcam, but there's far more to this unit than I first realised. There's the RTMP server that's built right in. The hardware's there so you can go live, YouTube, anywhere, very easily. Then you've got the Ethernet control of the camera. Not just the camera quality, but also the framing, which you can then memorise. And you can cut that together, mimicking the effects of several cameras. With an HDMI output, nice and clean, you could then have several units and cut those together and mimic the effect of a much larger production. The picture quality is not too shabby either. It's much better than I thought it would be. This is starting to get serious, and this is just the entry-level model. I can imagine doing a large corporate conference with three or four of these and just one operator. It's a bit worrying. Are we starting to witness the beginning of the end of a large part of our industry? Or should we be getting excited and buy three or four of these ourselves, offer it as a service? I'm really not sure. What do you think? Thanks for watching. Yeah.